So the, the master planning process has been really going on for well over a decade. And um, it, it, has, it has been really a very community involved process. There have been countless community meetings and uh, community finds Koke to be a, one of the unique and special, really sacred areas of our, of our island. And so they've, they've been really engaged in terms of uh, being part of the planning process. Um, really great turnouts. Uh, I remember a meeting we had at the War Memorial uh, Center in, in Lihui where I think there was over 600 people that turned out for that. Many public hearings and meetings of over 100 each. And what came out of that was a, a, a legislatively appointed group called the uh, um, Koke State Park Advisory Council. And that was formed in, during the legislative season of 2008. And, and our first meetings were in 2009. I was, I was appointed uh, by Senator Hoosier to that, to that council and then subsequently reappointed by, by Governor Abercrombie. So I'm on my second, second term there. So that council has been, one of its mandates was to work with the state to revise the master plan that the state and, and their consultant had prepared to bring it more into, um, into, the, into the, a form or into a plan that was consistent with community values and testimony over the years. And so, um, it's been a it's been quite a long process and and it's great that we have finally reached the end of that how much revision was necessary to achieve that goal you know uh, actually quite a bit starting from the the, the version we inherited which initially up, if you can imagine up at um, uh, Kanaloa Hulu Hulu which is what often called the meadow where where the museum is initial plans had a, had a small hotel there kind of on, on you know, I think the concept was like Volcano House, and uh, but it really there was a lot of commercialization of the park with with um, vendors and concessionaires at the, at the major lookouts and lots of signage and and many of the community members really wanted to see Koke um, undeveloped and and so we had to find this middle ground between the, the uh, division of state parks vision and dream which of which I think many aspects of it were really commendable to have a to have a park that's more kind of aligns with with what you see in national parks with really professional staff better resource uh, management uh, better interpretive facilities especially the interpretation at the lookouts better parking safe um, so it was really a, a, a plan that raised the bar quite high and I think that initially the, the state felt the only way they would probably be able to fund a lot of that was through additional revenue generation. And, and uh, so the most controversial part of the, of the entire master plan and the thing we've received most testimony on and the one aspect of the plan that we did not revise was an entry station that will generate revenue for the park. And the state compromised on many of the others and including some of the concessionaires and the removal of the hotel, but they felt that it was critical that they maintain the ability to generate revenue there. So at the end, we, the community and, and uh, the advisory council rather, and uh, state parks, we, we agreed to disagree on the entry station and the, and the council passed it on. Um, one of the concerns the council had with that, over that issue was it requires the division of state parks to take over several miles of roadway within the park and to maintain the roads in the park has always been an issue. Uh, what you saw in the last couple of days when you were up there is, is really good because it was repaved, but for 25 years it was in really, really bad disrepair. And obviously it's contingent upon um, uh, DLNR getting dedicated funding from, from a fund to, to maintain the roads. Our concern is that in tight years funds, the legislature grabs all the, all the money. and so. Um, our hope is that if the state does put that entry station in, that they'll consider moving it further up on the mountain to minimize the amount of roads that they'll be responsible for. K is one of the few parks that already generates enough revenue because of the leasehold cabins inside the park. And so the community felt, why do we need more revenue? And the reality is the state has many state parks that will never be able to generate any revenue. 
And so the idea is that the state was promoting was to take the parks that could generate revenue and to, and to use them to help underwrite maintenance at, at, at other parks. The community felt that was kind of like a black hole that was going to suck money away from, you know, basically using our parks as a, you know, as an extractive resource and uh, to support, to support um, properties elsewhere. Uh, one of the proposals we put forward was could that money from Cocay simply stay on the island to take care of Polihali and Wailua and, and other parks that are not generating revenue here. Um, but at the end, it's not the council's prerogative to determine how that money is, is collected and used. So, um, but that was, a, that was a really important point in the, in the whole discussion. It is technically the Waimea uh, Waimea Canyon and Kokei State Parks Master Plan. So it does include both of those. They are absolutely linked together and the drive up along the canyon is is really what draws many of the people up up, up the mountain. And, uh, and, and so yes, they're absolutely linked together. LNR has a hierarchical um, um, uh, system in place in terms of resource management, whereas the, the first and highest priority for DLNR in, in land management is the resource itself and is, is to care for and, and sustain and perpetuate that resource. Second is public recreational use, and public recreational use is allowed if it doesn't degrade that resource. And then the third hierarchical uh, level is commercial use, and commercial use is only allowed if it doesn't negatively impact the public recreational use or the, the stewardship of, of the resource itself. And that is actually really reflective of, of that proverb because if you really take that into its core and essence, we are looking to the management and stewardship of the land first as, as our highest and most important priority. And in fact, the council has, has really held to that tenet in their review of the master plan.